This activity, we are going to look at the Miro symbols. Miro used symbols in his work all the time to create these little characters. The drawing component is all levels and there's a sculptural component that is more five and six. We're looking at line and shape. So basically what you have to do is grab his work, have a good look at it and start to identify symbols that are reoccurring like this. So there's one, the dots and the line, there it is. The hair around the face, again, star, this is reoccurring in his work, sausage shapes and kidneys, circles and these organic shapes, triangles and the V with the dot on the end. You look at his work and you'll start to see them again. The stars, the dots with the lines, this eye is very typical Miro, the circle and the organic bean shape. So what we want to do now is create our own symbol shape so the children can put the symbols together to create their own little pictures. So to begin with, we're going to use this equipment. We've got some white paper, we have some poster paint and a brush and water and a black marker. Right, so the first thing you're going to do on your piece of paper is identify those shapes and start to draw. I like to draw in texture or marker because if you make a mistake, you can't rub it out. Too much time is spent about getting it perfect and worrying about making mistakes. Well, you really need just to do it. And this can be used as a rough copy or this can be a good copy, depending on what you want. And you can actually, another good thing with the shapes, these are sort of the symbols, the symbol of the star and the symbol of the eyes and the nose, but these shapes, it's actually quite important for the students to overlap them because when they overlap them, when they paint them, they'll be able to change the colours. So do try to get the kids to overlap some shapes. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So the students have reviewed Miro's work, they've made their symbols, chosen their best or favourite one and from that point have been able to make a symbol sheet which can be hung up or photocopied smaller for the table and the students have all contributed so it's student base and we've got lots of little symbols here to work with.
what we're going to do now is we've got our finished drawing. The next part of this is a, a group activity. So give the students a square colour. Now I'm using these because they are double sided with colour and it's cardboard. And the students now use this sheet or their symbol sheet to create a new drawing. So now we're going to take the coloured cardboard and we're going to look at our symbols and shapes and we're going to make a larger one to cut out. So I really like this little guy here. I'm going to make him. I'm using Posca paint pens because one, they draw on anything and two, they're bright colours but you do have to wait for them to dry and they can smudge. So you just need the students to be aware. Okay, I'm gonna keep that blue. Now I'm gonna say make two each, so I'm gonna let that one dry and I'm gonna go on to the next one. chosen this coloured card is because of the bright colour and that it's the same on both sides and I've actually already made a few and cut them out so I'll show you those in a second you can colour them in however you want it doesn't have to be coloured in to move that out of the way. Now here's some that I've already cut out and what I've done is the pieces that I've cut out, some of them leftover little pieces, I've made little symbols. So to add to this, I'm going to cut this one out. Now when I cut, I like to cut around the lines, not on the lines. So I'm actually cutting around the line and then I get that nice extra green line. I wouldn't waste that. Right, what I would do is actually draw on it and turn that into a little mirror shape. Now when these dry, you can turn them over and go on the back or you can leave it plain. The reason is because you're going to make this into a sculpture. So. You get the students to work into teams. So you want them in teams of um, three or four. And they're going to do slit cuts and slit the cardboard in and make a free standing sculpture. Now, they're gonna have mathematical problems with this. One of the problems they're gonna have is balance, height, working as a team. I actually have made two larger ones with flat bottoms on purpose because I know 
that I need something to stand up on the bottom. So I'm going to slip these now and put them in. So I'm going to just get my funny little Miro guys and this is definitely not as easy as it looks but you've got to make a slit and you've got to make a slit and then your slit cut in like this. So that's one. Okay, if I want to put that in there, there, I've got to work it out. And this is what the students have got to do, work it out and it's got to stand up or it's standing up just like that, it looks all right. But I want it to stand up a bit more, so I'm gonna go there. And I want that to go in, say there. This is difficult for the students, but once they get the hang of it, they can do it. Okay, oh, there we go. That's standing up nearly nicely. Okay, and you can imagine if you're working with a team of children, there's going to be problems. But that's okay. The problems and the solutions are part of the learning. key is to have one big object in the middle. I'm trying to attach this and I'm, I'm, I can't work out how to do it. So if I go sideways, I don't really want it sideways and I can't go up. I'll try down. Well, there you go. That was the Miro challenge. Look at that, it blew over. Let's think about that for a second. Resilience and perseverance, because that's what it took. The cutting and slicing and making the construction, it wasn't easy. And if you're working in a group of students, it would be even more difficult. I'm sure there's going to be leaders and followers and discussions, but I got there in the end and so will the students because of the construction, it does have challenges and that's why it's an upper school activity because those challenges, I got there, so you will too.